Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Got a very interesting broadcast tonight. We did lose our sound and live stream there, and we uh, got you going here, though, to where you'll be able to see the broadcast there. I actually had to redo the broadcast. If you, Anyway, if you have your Bible, let's go quickly over to Daniel chapter 11, verse 43. Now, this is speaking about the prince that shall come. And a little bit later, we will go into that, uh, go back to the scripture in Daniel chapter 9, just to review that. But starting here with verse 43, this is a biblical prophecy that is fulfilling itself. It is manifesting itself right before your eyes on a daily basis. And people don't even know. They don't even realize prophecy is being fulfilled. In verse 43 of chapter 11 says, But he shall have power over the treasuries of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Now, who's that he? That is the prince that shall come. And he is over the gold and, and the, and the tray. He's over the, over the treasures of gold and silver and over all precious things of Egypt. That's none other than the Pope of Rome. That is Italy itself. And you're going to find out the whole money trail. Follow that money trail and you'll find out who the guilty party is. And we're going to go into that very rapidly here. First of all, I'd like to take you there to some news articles that I copied and pasted here into my uh, WordPress here. Excuse me, my, my uh, uh, Microsoft uh, Word. And this article right here is one of the very most powerful ones here. It says, Vast natural gas reserves discovered in Ethiopia. Uh, pipeline stretching from Ethiopia to Deyambute under construction. This was released on March the 27th of 2015. All right, now this pipeline that's being built there, it actually says that uh, Oramba Times, uh, is, is who actually did the article here, says Adidas Ababa, the vast reserves of natural gas recently discovered in Ethiopia drew particular attention to the international companies. A construction of gas pipelines stretching from the Arbaminich to uh, Diabute through Awasa and Diradawa is underway. Local Ethiopian newspaper reported. All right. Now, if they're constructing a natural gas pipeline, friends, then you have to keep in mind the knowing of the natural gas is there has been known for quite some time, or they wouldn't be out there constructing a natural gas pipeline. All right, and now we went back with you guys not too long ago, and we discussed a lot of different key scriptures that have been, that's been being fulfilled here in modern times. Let me just quickly show you another one here because I think it's very important that we stay on top of biblical prophecies that are going on. In Micah, uh, because everything is happening right now mostly in the Middle East, and we're going to go through these scriptures here that does deal with the Middle East. But Micah, actually in Micah chapter 7 here, I want to quickly take you to a scripture here, and this was one that has been fulfilled here in the last couple of years. Um, and so let me take you down to where that one is there, and... Let me open up my Bible here so I get to the right place there. So I don't miss it with you there. I've got, I've got everything marked there, but it's, I don't have it marked here. All right, uh, it's in verse 13. And the land shall be desolate for them that dwell therein because of the fruit of their doings. What land is going to be desolate? Well, we got to look at verse 12. There shall be a day when they shall come unto thee from Assyria, even the cities of Egypt, and from Egypt even unto the river, and from the sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. And the land shall be desolate for them that dwell therein because of the fruit of their doings. Assyria, by the way, friends, the modern-day Syria is in that region, the domain of ancient Assyria to begin with. Parts of also Iran and, and Jordan also encompass that area back in biblical times. But it says that it would be desolate because of their own doings. That's because the United States went in there and created ISIS, uh, along, along with uh, some help with, the, with Israeli Mossad there, that have actually helped govern the forces there, that have caused an internal conflict, a, a civil war. You know, we know from John Stockwell, the former CIA head of director of operations there, who has stated that the United States is very well known for toppling democracies, perfectly good democracies, for whatever gain or purpose that they so desire. Well, that's what's happened in Syria. Bashar, Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria, has had to endure several years now of civil unrest and civil war in his country thanks to the United States that wants to oust him. 
And we're going to find out why. Because Daniel clearly prophesies of why that this is going on. And anything back in here, we got all kinds of prophecies that we've talked about in recent broadcasts about these things that are, that are going on there in the Middle East. But of course, Russia has thrown a has thrown a monkey wrench in the whole program because Russia came in and that was something that the Vatican was not thinking about. When I say the Vatican wasn't thinking about, you have to remember, I believe it's in the Apocalypse of Abraham. Abraham's apocalyptic writing speaks about how that the world would be bankrupt by the Roman soldiers in the latter days. The Roman soldiers? Well, that tells you clearly then that Rome is the one that's over the soldiers. And of course, Rome does carry a lot of heavy weight over NATO, the NATO forces, the United Nations. The Vatican has a lot of weight over all of this completely without, without any. <laughs> I mean, that's just facts, okay? Facts are facts. We can't, we can't ignore that. Now, let me take you real quick here before we jump back, uh, going back to Daniel here, to the prophecy in Daniel. And we'll be dealing with a couple of things there in Daniel. I need to, uh, and we'll be going to Obadiah as well. Let's quickly get us back in here, chapter 11 here. We'll scoot right on down here to some of these verses in the bottom where we'll be picking up at. And uh, let's go back, though, to the articles, some of these articles that I brought out here. Now, another one here, another thing that we've seen here, that violent clashes in Ethiopia have broken out over a master plan to expand the Adidas. Okay, the Adidas Ababa. Now, why do they need to expand the Adidas there? The Adidas is, of course, it's in Ethiopia. Remember, Adidas Ababa. Let me, let me kind of, let's, let's make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see that. Men parade in the Ormoya region outside Adidas Ababa. This is the photograph here that, uh, from Reuters that they put up there. Now, I don't want to start a doctrine out of this, so please don't get a doctrine started. Brother Steve said this, but I thought it was kind of funny. The guy that's on the white horse there, doesn't he look like... Barack Obama, President Obama. I tell you, he does. It's kind of funny. Anyway, though, uh, the clashes that have broke out there, it's been very serious there in the region there. There's been a lot of people that have been killed already as a result of these clashes here. I'm going to blow this up so you can see a little bit better on the screen. At least 10 students are said to have been killed and hundreds injured during protests against the Ethiopian government's plans to expand the capital city into the surrounding farmland. According to the Human Rights Watch, the students were killed this week when security forces used excessive force and live ammunition to disperse the crowds. Uh, this here was, uh, says here that the students were protesting against a controversial proposal known as the Master Plan to expand Adidas Ababa into surrounding or Ormia State, which they say will threaten local farmers with mass evictions. Mass evictions? Why would they want to throw the Ethiopians out of their land? Well, remember what we just saw here. There is a huge amount of natural gas that was discovered in Ethiopia, and they're building that gas pipeline. And where does that happen to be at? It's in that very region there that we just now talked about, right there on your screen. And I'll highlight that up for you guys so you can see that a little bit better yourself. Adidas Ababa. So there is a reason then why they're going to do this mass eviction. Now you might say, well, Steve, that's, that, there's no, you don't have any proof on that. You're just speculating. This is why they're doing it because you're looking at a Bible verse and saying that the Vatican's in behind the, the, the Ethiopia follow, falling at its steps. We're going to go into that in just a moment. You're going to find out how the Vatican historically has been responsible or complicit to the death of over a million Ethiopians as well as today displacing and causing the mass exodus of not only the Ethiopians and the refugees down in that area there, but as well as the Muslim neighborhoods and population, the Arabic people from Syria and other parts of the regions that have been dispersed and going to all over the world. All right, very sad situation indeed. So violent clashes have broken, breaking out, broken out in Ethiopia over the master plan to expand the Adidas. That's exactly what we're seeing happen. Now remember, the Vatican claims to be that world ruler. They claim to be the, 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 the main one over the world there. Let me move on down a little bit further here. All right. Um, this here, 
Now, I want you to see what the Vatican's official news is going on that they're saying as well, because they're reporting about what's going on out there in Ethiopia too. This is under the, the news of the Vatican News, official Vatican network. It says, Africa, Ethiopia, emergency in Ethiopia for tens of thousands of South Sudanese refugees, Adidas Ababa. Wow, that's right where we're at. There are between 72,000 to 100,000 South Sudanese refugees who have fled to Western Ethiopian region of Gambela, according to the estimates by some humanitarian organizations operating in the area. Clashes between government soldiers and rebels loyal to former South Sudanese Vice President Rick Mahar have forced several hundreds of thousands of inter internally displaced people and refugees into neighboring countries, primarily Ethiopia, to flee the humanitarian situation of refugees in Gambala region is a precarious and it's getting worse day by day to, to, to the continuous arrival of new refugees. Now, this is what the Vatican is reporting on right here, okay? Now, it's interesting that the Vatican is reporting this like the way that they're reporting it, like this is a big bad thing going on in Ethiopia and we're here to say this is creating a humanitarian problem. But yet, when we go back over here to the Bible, we see that the Bible clearly identifies the Vatican as the one that is causing the problem. All right? Now, let me, let me get over here right along with you here. Okay. So, that's in verse 42. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of the Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. And now we're seeing the Vatican, we're seeing other news agencies reporting about problems, settlement, unrest, violence going on there in Ethiopia. But friends, it's been going on a lot longer than just now. Why? Because the natural gas and stuff was discovered much earlier. There are, they've been building these pipelines. So that discovery was even earlier. And this is what's been going on in the Middle East as well. Huge discoveries of natural gas off the coast of Israel and off of the coast of Syria, as well as Egypt, have been discovered. And who do you think got the, the rights to get the natural gas uh, drilling rights off of Egypt? An Italian-based oil company got those rights. That's exactly right. Well, you might say, Steve, that's still not, um, uh, you're not implicating the Pope at that particular point. Well, you're right, we're not. So let's take a look at what's really going on, and then we're going to come back to the biblical side of this, and we're going to really backtrack a little bit in Daniel's prophecy of chapter 11, and we're going to bring it down with a grand finale for you here. All right, friends, let's go over here. We have a wonderful thing that is being put on right now. By the, by the Vatican, the Vatican and the World Bank partner to launch a year of mercy with St. Peter's Climate Change Light Show. That sounds like a wonderful thing that the Vatican's doing. The Pope of Rome has put this together. This was actually something that just come to pass. It happened, uh, says Rome, on December the 4th of 2015, the Catholic Church founded to shed the light of Christ on the world has quite literally invited the world to shed its light on her. On December the 8th, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, as well as the opening of the Extraordinary Jubilee of Mercy, Pope Francis has allowed the climate change partisans and population controlled advocates to project a light show on the facade of the cupola of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, the most important church in the Catholic world, so as the inspired change around the climate crisis. The show titled Illuminating Our Common Home, probably Illuminati, our common home, will project onto St. Peter's images of our shared natural world in order to educate, inspire, and change around the climate crisis across generations, cultures, languages, religions, and class. States a press release about the event put on by, the, by one of the sponsors. The Vatican spokesperson for the event, Archbishop Rino Fischilia, the president of the Pontifical Council of the New Evangelicalization, called the event unique, for its gender and for the fact that it is being displayed for the first time on such a significant backdrop. These illuminations will present images inspired by mercy of humanitarian, of the natural world and climate change, Francelica said. Francelica said that the light show of the Vatican is meant to link Pope Francis' environmental encyclical Laudato Si with the United Nations Climate Change Conference uh, 
uh, currently underway in Paris. The Vatican has shown strong support for the conference, having the show conclude the opening year of mercy celebrations also links the Pope's message about mercy to fighting climate change. That was officially, officially, what is, that was done on the 9th there in Vatican City. As you can see, they were using the, the images there on front of St. Peter's Basilica to actually do this, which is really not St. Peter's, but that's what they call it nonetheless. But what they did not tell you is just how wicked and evil the World Bank is. And the Pope of Rome has known this all along. And what's really been going on in Ethiopia, they've known all along as well. But the thing is, they would have you believe all these lies that we just shared with you here, they, they would rather you believe the lies that the Vatican has told you on their news program. They, oh, by the way, the Vatican did make sure that the so-called Ethiopian Christians that were killed in Libya, that were all beheaded, this made world headlines. These Catholic boys that were beheaded by ISIS. Of course, ISIS is making its round not only in the Middle East, but also down into Libya and even into Ethiopia. And they were beheading Catholic Christians. Why? To make it look like that they're the victim. Of course. They don't want you to know that the, the Vatican is very complicit with this huge refugees and humanitarian crisis that's going on. They don't want you to know about that. Okay, so let's go, let's go back and let's take a look at some things here. Like I said, this here, violent clashes in Ethiopia, the master plan to expand Adidas. And for what reason? Because of this natural gas reserve that's been discovered. They got to make way for it. And they might be broadening the city, not just for being able to do the natural gas, but maybe they need to build new buildings in there, you know, for the common good of Ethiopia, right? Well, let's take a look at what's really going on, what the Vatican really is supporting. This here was found on the World Bank. Uh, the website there is called theworldbank.org. All right, and this article here, this was done by, by the way, friends, over 50 journalists were involved in putting this information together here. And I'm going to only highlight on a few things that, are, that is actually in this article here that I want to share with you. All right, but let's just, let's just kind of highlight transcript. Vatican Press Conference with World Bank Group President Jim, uh, Jim Yong Kim. He says, I came he, uh, here specifically, oh, I'm sorry, this was not the article done by the 50. Uh, my apologies, friends. I need to take you to that article first. Uh, that, you know, no, let's go back here. All right. This here only shows, again, the Vatican's involvement. It's another the World Bank, this is on their website, showing the Vatican's involvement with the World Bank is what we're looking at right here. The transcript, the Vatican press conference with World Bank Group President Jim, Jim Young Kim. It says here, Dr. Kim, thanks very much for coming. I came here specifically to speak with the Holy Father about some of the things that have been happening in the World Bank Group that affect the entire world and that are much in line with his stated priorities. As you may know, we have launched a target to end extreme poverty, that is people living on less than, uh, uh, let, me, let me blow this up again for you guys that are, that are watching here. Okay. As you may know, we have launched a target to end extreme poverty that is uh, people living on less than uh, U.S. $1.25 a day by 2030. That's awfully gracious of you, isn't it? And that means to bring it below 3% of people in the world living in the extreme poverty. And we've done a lot of studies, and it turns out that it's going to be extremely hard to reach that target. Well, of course not. As long as you're keeping all the billionaires and millionaires all fat, and as long as the Vatican holds all the treasures of the world uh, in, in Vatican City and in the Vatican Bank, and of course in the World Bank as well, and they won't release their funds, yeah, no one's ever going to make over $1.25 a day in these impoverished nations. Anyway, so, so the growth rates, especially inclusion of the poorest in growth, are going to have to be at levels that are higher than we've seen in the last 20 years. In other words, we have to grow more quickly and we have to include more of the poor in growth if we're to reach that target. Sounds like a great thing, Mr. Jim, Jim, uh, Jim, Mr. Kim. 
Moreover, the second target that we have set is boosting shared prosperity. And by shared prosperity, we are going to follow the income growth of the bottom 40% of the population in developing countries. And we've now understood that throughout the world, that if you leave, if you have GDP growth, but that don't include the bottom 40%, you built instability into your societies. We've seen this in the Arab Spring. We've seen this in Brazil and Turkey. Well, you help create Arab Spring, and you're creating the crisis in Ethiopia now. And so in many ways that the Holy Father has been saying about inclusion and poverty is exactly the same things as we have been saying. So I spoke with him at great length about our target to end poverty. I spoke with him also about our commitment to work in the most fragile and conflicted states. That was awfully nice of him, wasn't it? Awfully nice of him to say that. But let's see what the World Bank is really doing. All right, so we go down to another article in which we pulled up here. And that happens to be the Africa Ethiopian Emergency in Ethiopian for tens of thousands of South Sudanese refugees. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the African one. I mean, that's the, uh, the Vatican one. Here's the one we're looking for right here. This here, how the World Bank broke its promise to protect the poor. This is the article that has over 50 journalists that were a part of this. And some of these journalists that are named here, I want you to be able to see for yourself so you know that I'm not just making this up. Sasha uh, Chavikin, Ben Hallman, Michael Hudson, uh, Shane Shefflet, um, uh, several of these, Gulia Afun, Mark Cabra, Anthony Langat, Jacob Kushner, many, many different people were involved in putting this article together and doing the investigation on this about the World Bank's uh, system there. I highlighted some key information that I wanted to share with you. These are the key findings of the report report itself. Over the last decade, projects funded by the World Bank have physically or economically displaced an estimated 3.4 million people, forcing them from their homes, taking their land, or damaging their livelihoods. The World Bank has done this? Well, maybe that explains why we have a problem in Ethiopia right now of civil unrest. But of course, the Vatican is reporting that it's, it's some of the for, it's, it's the other the, the former government the uh, the former president's rival people that are causing the problems, but it says here the World Bank has regularly failed to live up to its own policies for protecting people harmed by projects it finances. The World Bank and its private sector lending arm, the International Finance Corp, have financed governments and companies accused of human rights violations such as rape, murder, and torture. In some cases, the lenders have continued to bankroll these borrowers after the evidence of abuses emerged. Ethiopian authorities diverted millions of dollars from a World Bank-supported project to fund a violent campaign of mass evictions, according to the former official who carried out the forced resettlement program. From 2009 to 2013, World Bank Group lenders pumped $50 billion into projects, graded the high risk for the irreversible or unprecedented social or environmental impacts more than twice as much as the previous five-year span. I wonder why. You don't think it has anything to do with that natural gas pipeline that's underway, do you? I'm sure it has a lot to do with it. The bank's commitment, it says, is to do no harm to people or the environment. The World Bank has broken its promises, or its promise. Over the past decade, the bank has regularly failed to enforce its rules with devastating consequences for some of the poorest and most vulnerable people. Oh, but isn't the Pope right there behind them? Oh, yes. Pope Francis, they had him a great facade out there to show that they're there for the environment and for the people. They're not the cause of any of the unrest because we can trust Vatican News for that. Vatican News tells us that's the former president of Ethiopia. They're the ones causing all the unrest. Maybe that's where all the money's going there. Maybe that's where all the bankroll is being given to the billions of dollars. Well, Let's take a look at the scripture again. Let's go back to what the Bible says about this. Let's move up just a little bit. Let's go and take a serious look. Now, 
before we before I start here in the bottom here of of Daniel's prophecy chapter 11 we're, at, we're actually going to start at verse 36 but I need to run you up to verse 14 I'm going to share with you something that's going to blow you away friends again prophecy being fulfilled let's look at verse 13 first and the king of the north shall again set forth a multitude greater than the former and he shall come on at the end of times even of years with a great army and with much substance what he's coming again so I guess mr. Francis when you, you know when the Pope before you or the Pope before that John Paul II when they sent NATO and their allies in there to destroy Iraq that wasn't enough it wasn't enough oil fields you you got in there and caused the unrest and caused the Iraqis to go in there and and to uh, invade Kuwait to justify a reason and of course do some more mass killings up there with the Kurds in the northern part of Iraq because why you have to liberate this country after all you're one of your first uh, uh, first Iraqi uh, arch uh, not archbishop but uh, cardinal you you nominate you you actually promoted a cardinal from Iraq that was really nice of you but you destabilize the region sent the United States in there that king of the north he goes in there and just ransacks the whole place destabilizes it then we find in verse 13 it says and the king of the north shall again set forth a multitude greater than the former that's your army that's your Roman soldiers because remember it was in the apocalypse of Abraham I believe is where this is written at where it speaks about that he will that, that they will bankrupt the world with his Roman soldiers of course not the Vatican only the world and you'll take the money from the wealthy and redistribute it to the poor doesn't that sound familiar friends sure does doesn't it anyway and he shall come on at the end of times even in the years with a great army and with much substance the end of years sounds like Jesus in Matthew 24 doesn't it there shall be wars and rumors of wars we're gonna go into that in just a little bit as well verse 14 and in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south also the children of the violent among thy people shall lift themselves up to establish the vision but they shall stumble I got to translate this for you a little bit more accurately it's pretty good it's pretty good there and King James this let me repeat what it says in King James this is where they translate it. and in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision but they shall fall or fail fall they got fall they shall fall all right not too bad either what's happening here what is it actually saying in those Hebrew words that you see on your screen when we get down there and it says about also the children of the violent among thy people see what do we do here I wish you could see my my highlighter here so you could see where we're at Uvene Palazzi Uvene and the sons literally and the sons of the wicked or another way you could say and the sons of the lawless ones the sons of the lawless ones of your people Amcha your people all right then he goes on your people will try they're going to try to marry the vision and they will fail you won't be able to make it happen you see what is he saying the, your sons of your people are going to try the lawless ones if you look at the gospel of the holy 12 or or the humane gospel of Yeshua these are some of the what, what's called the lost gospels there many times Jesus in this particular books here and these by the way are the ones that we actually are quoted by the early church fathers they didn't have Matthew Mark Luke and John at that time they had the gospel of the Hebrew gospel of Matthew which is the gospel of the Holy 12 and the gospel of the Ebonites which is the humane gospel of what is called today that's the books that they had then and they quoted from them and then from that is where they brought together Matthew Mark Luke and John but anyway Jesus always refers in there of the lawless ones and he referred to the lawless ones as being the Orthodox Jews of today or excuse me of, the, of his time period 
the ones that were in there doing the sacrificial service in the temple. Jesus called them the lawless ones. Why was he calling them that? Because Jesus believed that the prophecy that was written in, in the commandments that was given to Moses, thou shalt not kill, also included the animals. But that was taken out. And other things were added. We can go into that another time. I've got plenty of videos on that already. But the thing is, if, if offering the, the sacrifices of the animals was what God wanted, and it was what remitted Israel's sins, then there should have never been destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Because Israel did not fail to offer those sacrifices very faithfully, all the way to the destruction of the temple. But Yeshua makes a very interesting comment when he says, if you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have killed the innocent. Now, some people believe that's a direct reference to himself. It was not. In the Hebrew Matthew, he says, you would not have bound the guiltless. It's in the Hebrew plural, speaking of the sacrificial animals. Now, it may make sense why Jeremiah actually says, and I'll just quickly, just for those that need to know it, let's just quickly look at that for those that, that may be not aware of this. Jeremiah clearly says in chapter 7, chapter 7, Jeremiah deals with this very thing as well. And he says here in verse 22, let's scroll you down real quick to verse 22 there. He says, For I spoke not unto your fathers, that's literally, for I spoke not to your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing I commanded them, saying, Hearken unto my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk ye in all the way that I commanded you, that it may be well with you. Isn't it Isaiah that actually says that my father's house shall be called a house of prayer? For all nations? You know, Yeshua actually quoted that scripture as well. My Father's house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you allowed the Pope of Rome to come in there. You allowed the Pope of Rome to come in there. And, and of course, Obadiah, what, what, what did Israel do? Now, let me, let me, I'm sorry, before I go to what the Pope of Rome did, let's real quick go back. We're going back to Daniel. Just like what we just read there. I want you to see that. See, what did he say there in verse 14? Chapter 11. I probably didn't hit on chapter 11 yet. Sorry about that. In verse 14, he says there, And in those times there shall many so stand against the king of the south, also the children of the violent, or the children of the lawless ones, sons of the lawless ones among thy people, shall lift themselves up. Literally uses the word marry in there. Ina Shaul is they shall marry. They shall, they're going to marry the vision. They want to marry the vision. In other words, they're, they're trying to bring it to pass. They're trying to make the vision of what? Of my father's house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Not just that, but to bring up past the millennial reign where it speaks about in that day that all nations shall come into Jerusalem. They're trying to manufacture a prophecy but it's not going to work you want me to prove to you they're trying to manufacture that prophecy Shimon Perez see because he says Amcha your people he's speaking to Daniel your people Parazi Amcha see lawless law, the, the sons of the lawless of your people Daniel like Benjamin Netanyahu, Shimon Perez, and others in the Israeli government that have been working with Rome and allowing Rome to come in and take over Israel. You allowed it. You already did it. Let me show you right where you did it at. In Obadiah. We go to the book of Obadiah. We find out right there. Obadiah chapter 1. There's only one chapter. You go down to the 16th verse and what did you do? It says, For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the nations drink continually. That may seem like nothing to you, but in, in Passover of 2014, what did the Pope of Rome do? He came and held a communion service in the upper room above King David's tomb. And, and what happened? Netanyahu's administration had already given Pope Benedict an official seat at King David's tomb back during his time as Antichrist on the seat. You made him the king of Israel, in other words. 
people look for a for a for a a Jewish antichrist. You know, every pope is an antichrist. Every pope is anti Christo, a substitute or one that is like Christ. Just like the word vicar of Christ actually means. He was also a raiser of taxes too. If you look in Daniel, where the raiser of taxes, Pope Benedict was the raiser of taxes. He was the one that came out and officially started condemning all these rich, wealthy people that have their money hidden, Swiss banks and things like that. And sure enough, all these tax laws got passed and they gathered all those people up, buddy, and they got their money back. He was your tax raiser. My God. But he, notice how it says about that tax raiser that would raise up? He would all of a sudden go off the scene for no, one's, uh, no particular reason, not because he dies or anything, just mysteriously he, he vanishes. And Pope Benedict just mysteriously retires. A lot of speculation in behind it, right? All right, so it says here, that is literally in the Hebrew masculine plural, which that tells me, for as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, this group here is men only. The Pope of Rome, in their own news broadcast, when they show themselves drinking there in the, in the upper room, and according to the broadcast, it was men only. But then it says in the next part of the sentence, after the little comma there, see, it says, it says, Al ha ha kodeshi on my holy mountain, which Mount Zion is identified in Obadiah as the holy mountain. So yes, it was on Mount Zion. It was in the upper room. It is by the Pope of Rome. It was men only in the first time they did it. Then it says, Ishatu kol ha goim. And they shall continually drink all the Gentiles. And that is gender inclusive plural. And they've continued to do their masses, not just in the upper room. They even went in there and evicted the Jews out of King David's tomb and did a mass in there. You want to know why? They wanted to show the Jews that they had control. Now, that is where your prophecy, that's one of the examples of the prophecy that is being fulfilled right before your eyes, friends. I mean, my gosh, friends, I wish some people would wake up. Many of you guys do wake up. I, I don't want to condemn you guys. Many of you are waking up. And remember, Daniel, the prince that shall come in chapter 9. Remember what we said about that right there? Chapter 9. Let's go down to, what is it? Verse, uh, was it verse 26. And after three score and two weeks shall an anointed one be cut off no, but and, and be no more. And the people of a prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The prince that shall come, that's your Antichrist spirit. He's not the anointed one. He's not the Mashiach, as it says here. Ikaret Mashiach. See, that was the anointed prince that is cut off. He's cut off in the midst of the week. See, right there in the midst of that 70th week. And see, they're trying to manufacture. They're trying to make the, they're trying to fake a millennial reign. They're trying to fake all the nations that are going to come to Jerusalem. This is why they're trying to internationalize Jerusalem. This is why they're taking, and they're going to throw the Jews, they're going to evict the Jews out of Jerusalem. Gulio Miotti wrote that in an article uh, on Israel National News. Look it up. He said they're going to evict the Jews out of Jerusalem. This is what they're doing all these laws for, friends. All right? Now, going back to chapter 11. Again, verse 14, just to get it to stick, I want it to sink in there. See, also the children are also, uh, literally it says, and the sons, and the sons of the lawless of your people, Amcha. See, they will marry the vision. They're going to try to marry the vision. Or it's, you have to try to make sense for people to understand. So it says, they, they lift themselves up to establish the vision. But they shall stumble, or they shall fail, or they shall fall. So see, no matter how much you get the Jews involved in it, Mr. Pope of Rome, you're not going to succeed. God's already prophesied your fall. Now, let's go ahead and let's go down now. Verse 36. We're going to jump back into the Middle East and then come right back to Ethiopia with this. And the king shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak strange things against the god of gods. And he shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that which is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers, and neither the desire of women nor any god shall he regard, for he shall magnify himself above all, above all. See, that's what Satan wanted to do. Satan wanted to be like God, wanted to be, sit in the temple of God and be worshipped as if he were God. 
So does the Pope of Rome. That's why he's called the Vicar of Christ. I, he takes the place of Christ. He is God on earth, in other words. All right? And see, he doesn't have any desire for women. Not at all. See, now not like when Yeshua taught, like the, in, in the Qumran community, it wasn't all celibacy. But the men that wanted to be celibate were celibate, and those that wanted to be married were married. That's what Paul taught as well. Did he not? He said, I would that you all be as I am. And he was single. He said, but let every man have according to his gift. But the Vatican does it complete, absolute, no. If you're a priest, you can't get married. Period. End of subject. All right? Now, verse 38 but in his place shall, shall he honor the God of strongholds, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and costly things. That's because he makes all these idols to marry and everything. Costly things? I've been in the St. Peter's Basilica. They have a, they have a huge mural of, of Mary on the wall. And what do they do? It's, it's studded with gigantic diamonds all the way around it. They're real diamonds too. They're real diamonds. See, but he doesn't acknowledge the God of his fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He doesn't acknowledge the true God of Israel. All right? And he shall deal. No, but remember, see, precious stones. And with precious stones, those are those diamonds that are in St. Peter's Basilica. And he shall deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign God. You know what that is? Notice, and he shall deal with the strongest fortresses with the help of a foreign god. This is where he gets the Muslims involved. This is why Hezbollah is going to help him take over Israel. And this is why what Mahmoud Abbas is working with him. See, the Bible says also that he comes up strong with a small people, and also in Daniel chapter 11 here, the prince that shall come comes up strong with a small people. That was your Palestinians. But he also, he's strongest with a fortress with the help of a foreign god. That is their Allah. And Allah is not Akbar. He's not greater. He's inferior because it's the devil. It is not God. All right? That is Marduk. That is who he actually is worshiping now. Whom he shall acknowledge and shall increase glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for a price. I need to include maybe even in this video here if I had the time. I'll bring it up very soon. I, I, we did the, 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 the interview with Lionel Parkinson fascinating insight on who Marduk really was in the, in the Cyrus Cylinder, something that he worked on. His father worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls. Very interesting. He's a document examiner. We interviewed him, and I've been promising to bring that out. I've got to bring it out for you guys. Verse 40, And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass passes through. Yeah, they start to push against the Pope of Rome and he sends in the NATO forces to come in there and deal with all of you. He shall enter also into the beauteous, uh, beauteous land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall be delivered out of his hand. Edom. Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon? Do you know? Let me just see if I can't real quick get something for you. I really, I want you just to see something here. Now, Moab... That's Jordan. Ammon, the kingdom of Ammon is modern-day Syria. Can you guys see that on there? I hope you can. The kingdom of Ammon is modern-day Syria. Moab is Jordan. Well, the Pope of Rome's already got an alliance with Jordan. Kingdom of Edom, that's probably part of Jordan as well. And even parts of Israel cover that area there. Of course, the Vatican is Edom of today, right? So, so he doesn't conquer, he does not conquer the children of Ammon, Syria. Why? Because Russia moved in. That kind of threw him all off. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. 
He's already sent the U.S. in there. They did the Benghazi thing, and then they caused a civil unrest there. And, and President Putin asked the United States, do not kill Gaddafi. Oh, but why he was in the hands of the people there, they made sure they put a bullet in his head. Was the CIA present, Mr. Uh, Obama? Who knows? Now it's an, an Italian oil company that has the drilling rights for your natural gas. Why isn't it the Egyptian oil company that has it? But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver. He's got power over all the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. Why? The money. The Pope of Rome, that's why you got a new world order coming. That's why you got a new world economic system coming. It's because he's going to have the power over all of it. You think those two keys on his flags don't represent both spiritual and political world power, world domination? It's exactly what it represents. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. What are you talking about there? The Libyans and the Ethiopians will be at his steps? So this is why we see Ethiopian authorities diverted millions of dollars from a World Bank-supported project to fund a violent campaign of mass evictions, according to the former officials who carried out the forced resettlement program. From 2009 to 2013, World Bank lenders pumped $50 billion into the projects, graded the highest risk for the irre irreversible, unprecedented social environmental impacts. Well, thank you, Pope Francis. Doesn't, isn't that what uh, Mr. Uh, Young Kim said, that the Vatican press conference with World Bank Group President Jim, Jim Young Kim? You're, you're working together. Isn't that why you had the World Bank to come there to the Vatican there and show you great facade about how great you were there at St. Peter's Basilica to do your light show? And yeah, you can't hide the light under a bushel. God will expose what you're doing. So we go back to the Word of God. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affright, affright him. And he shall go forth with great fury to destroy, not only to take away many. It worries him. Because Russia came down. You see, this has been going on now for a couple of years now, several years. The U.S. has been working, supposedly bombing ISIS, getting nowhere. Only causing refugee crisis. Fulfilling Micah chapter 7. They caused that refugee crisis of their own doings. Send them all over the world. You cause the crisis down in Africa. They come across into Europe. You cause the crisis over there in, in Syria. They come through. They're all, and they're all coming to Europe. Why you got them all coming to Europe for? Maybe you want to, in, maybe you want to redistribute the wealth. Maybe that's your, your idea. But the tidings out of the north and out of the east. See, China and Russia. See, you're not sure so much about China. So you hurried up and got them in the IMF, International Monetary Fund. You got them in there to kind of, hopefully, they won't turn against you. So then you went on a fury. We saw that even with John Kerry's words the other day about Iran and Russia. He said the Assad regime, Basar al-Assad, the president of Syria, has to go. And he said, and if Iran and Russia don't go along with the plan, then we will know who the problem children are. And we'll deal with that. We'll have to make, we'll have to do things that we don't want to do. This is what Mr. John Kerry had to say about President Putin and, of course, the Iranians. All right? And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and Botus, holy mountain, and he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Now we can think about Nathan's dream. He sees. Russia and the NATO allies go to war with each other for about two weeks. That's why they're worried. After that, though, they're doing an alliance. Then they come against Israel to take the land. But that's where Edom comes to his end. And by the way, in closing, I want to share this with you here. Let's go back to Obadiah. I want to share something with you that is very fascinating to me. Verse 20, And the captivity of his host of the children of Israel that are among the Canaanites, even the Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, this is the Sepharad, Sepharad, 
shall possess the cities of the south. And saviors or deliverers shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. That's why Rome has an end. Little Nathan in his prophecy that he saw, what did he see? When the Mount of Olives split in half, he said these, these two that had died, when they raise up, the mountain splits. Right there when they raise up on the Mount of Olives. The two witnesses. But before they die, according to Revelation, they're going to prophesy for three and a half years. And according to what Nathan saw, when they, right when they raise up from the dead, because remember, when they die, according to Revelation, they send gifts one to another. They rejoice over the death of these two witnesses because it caused so much turmoil. Well, even right here, it says here, Ve'alu Moshoim, see, Bahatzion, deliverers shall come up upon Mount Zion. And they're going to preach the pure gospel. They're going to restore the holy way. They're going to bring back what Jeremiah was trying to preach, what Isaiah was trying to preach. It's not going to be pretty. The world will hate them. I hear so many of my brothers and sisters say, you know, I can't wait for them to come. Are people really sure they want them to come? I don't think they do. What are you going to do when they do restore the holy way of the gospel? What are you going to do when they really do believe that the animals do have a soul? as it's written in Genesis. What are you going to do when they tell you that the coming millennial reign, there'll be no death, no sorrow, the animals won't be crying out? What are you going to do then? Will you rejoice in their death because they preached a gospel that you didn't like too well? Will it be like in Hosea? See, uh, we won't go into that. We've been long enough, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our broadcast. We need your help. And I try not to ask too often. But if you want to stand with this ministry and support it, please do so. You can do so by two different ways. IsraelReturns.com is our ministry website where we speak biblical ministry on regular teachings and things like that. It has under contact uh, and also a place where you can donate online or you can mail us directly. We have started getting our mail in here into Europe now. Or you can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. There's just a little place you can click on to donate online there as well. We thank you for helping us to get this message out to the world. I'm Stephen Benoon. Watch these prophecies as they fulfill. They're happening all around you. Ethiopia has been fulfilling now for a couple of years and continues to fulfill even today, even this week. And the Vatican is involved in all of it. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.